Well, we may be finishing up the 66 Princeton. The replacement volume and reverb pots are fine. Those replacement uh, film caps are fine. The amp is sounding overall very good. Uh, the last thing I did internally was the old 27K resistor there in the bias. Actually measured 30, almost 31K. And with it, the bias was just a little bit on the cold side, about 42% idle. And now with a actual 27K, it's right about 50% idle, which is about as good as you can get on one of these, unless you put in a, um, an adjustable trim pot. But in an amp like this, where everything's pretty much original, A, it's nice to keep as much as possible, either original or in the original spirit. B, Princeton does not need to have fine-tuned bias. A little bit on the cool side is ideal for the way the cathode tremolo works. So now let's check out the reverb tank because it's been disconnected for a long time because the owner thought it was a cause of noise. That's possible. It could also have been the old caps and such. So let's find out. Well, when I went to put everything back together, I reached inside and felt the tank just to make sure that the RCA connections weren't loose inside the reverb bag. And the reverb bag has been installed 100 degrees backwards, which is uh, just means someone's been in there and put it back wrong. So let's see what it sounds like when it's flipped the right way around, and this will give us a chance to inspect it. That's not a good sign. Yeah, this tank's kaput. The springs are all broken inside. So, I was hoping to get this amp finished and back to the owner tomorrow. That's not going to be possible. So, I will call them and let them know. But I will hook up this tank I have that's not for sale because it has a, a damage to an RCA connector on it, but it works. And I can at least verify that the reverb cables are working correctly and that when the correct tank is in the amplifier in the correct orientation, that there's no noise. Because I don't want to order them a new reverb tank and then find that I need to, should have ordered some new braided reverb cables at the same time. Here's one of the springs that just fell out of the old tank. So yeah, that's toast. And uh, while we have a good opportunity, let's make sure all the uh, nuts holding the speaker in place are tight. It's hard to do when the reverb tank's there. Now by tight, I don't mean as tight as ca I'm capable of doing it. I just mean that they're not going to go loose. All right, that's 5 sixteenths. Oh, I'm sorry, 11 32nd. Ah, that's a good strong magnet in there. Whatever this speaker is, it's on the verge of being overkill for a Princeton, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't recognize the brand. Someone said guest pile driver. Usually those have big garish ugly logos. The frame kind of looks like an eminence, but I don't I'm not familiar with any eminences with an aluminum dust cap. Being careful, I don't want to break anything out of the baffle, all that feels pretty good. And let's get my big long screwdriver and make sure all the baffle screws are tight while we're in here. Give this thing its best chance to sound good. I've learned two things. First of all, the speaker doesn't sound very good. It doesn't have much low end at all. Second of all, this braided cable's bad. So bad tank and bad cables. Let's put in my test cable just to demonstrate. neck pickup and it sounded like it might be a bridge pickup on some other guitar so yeah that speaker is not anyone's friend certainly not this amp's friend and these reverb tank and cables other than that it's sounding really nice and i think eventually the owner's gonna love it
but we're not quite there yet. Let's see if we can get one other Princeton done today, though. Well, some days you just can't win. After running into that bad reverb tank and bad cables and crappy sounding speaker on the 66 Princeton, I thought, well, I got that 68 Princeton here. I can finish that up and at least get something done today. So this 68 Princeton came in a few weeks ago and the original reverb driver transformer, the old Schumacher, uh, I diagnosed it as arcing and I confirmed that diagnosis by temporarily installing this Mercury reverb driver transformer, which actually belongs to a different amp, so it could only be used temporarily. And the amp sounded great with that. So I looked at what was available, what I could get quickly, and I ordered this Hammond 1750A, which is usually a great choice. And I installed it. And uh, as soon as I installed it, smoke came out of the amp, and this 1K dropping resistor in the power section, as you can tell, just absolutely caught on fire because, and I found this with the with a meter, this blue primary measures zero ohms to the shell of the transformer. And when the shell of the transformer is tied to chassis, that means this is shorted to ground and you've got a couple hundred volts shorting to ground and you burn transformers. So this was clearly bad. It's the first bad Hammond I've ever experienced, especially new out of the box. So I contacted the vendor and they said, well, we have a weird thing with Hammond where we can't send a replacement, but Hammond can. So Hammond, we're gonna submit this to Hammond and they will either ask you to send the old one back or they will just send a replacement. Well, the replacement finally arrived and they didn't ask me to send the, the new one back. So I'm like, great. I'll." You know, the, the dud's really rare. Let me install this one. Well, I went to install this and I put this screw in and everything was fine. I went to put the other screw in and there's a problem, a big problem. This is a 1750A. This is also labeled a 1750A. The holes don't line up. These flanges are smaller than on the, the other one. And this hole centers are much narrower from here to here on this than on this. Now this has the same dimensions as the old Schumacher. The Mercury has the same dimensions as the old Schumacher. So the Hammond that I bought the first time that's dead has the correct hole spacing. Haybores have the correct hole, sp hole spacing. Uh, old Schumachers have the correct hole spacing. Mercury's have the correct hole spacing. If I could still get classic tones, they have the correct hole spacing. This Hammond that they sent me does not have the correct hole spacing, and I'm not going to drill a new hole in a 68 Princeton because they changed um, a spec or put the wrong shell on this. What's odd to me is that it's still labeled a 1750A and all the numbers on the case are the same, uh, which is bothersome. So I am going to send this back and get my money back and source a Habor or a Mercury for the client. Now, the only the other dimension that's changed between these two, is, let me see if I can get it to focus for you. You can see the, the center that uh, covers the, uh, the iron interleavings is, is bigger on the one which fits the app but was toasted. The new one is physically smaller in uh, the left to right dimension there. And that carries over here. Very frustrating. So, two amps, two beautiful old Princetons, very, very close to done. You know, I'm, I'm cool with the bad reverb tank. That happens a lot. I'm all right with finding a defective speaker, no big deal. The old braided cables, yeah, they come and go. They're not meant to last. But Hammond, come on, guys. What the literal hell?